In this episode of Redefine, we caught up with the very talented Sue Bryce, Australia's Portrait Photographer of the Year. We had a chance while we were both in Atlanta to sit down and discuss the process behind why her clients look and feel so gorgeous. And listen in as Sue shares how she took her business from nothing to $20,000 a week. Because the last thing your business model should be is an afterthought. Special thanks to our sponsors Adorama, the photography people, and T1 Line, the voice and data solution experts. Tell us a little bit about how you, because you've been shooting for how long now? 22 years. 22 years. And you have the interesting distinction of saying, I was a glamour photographer before there was glamour, but now I'm bringing it back and I'm not apologizing for the word glamour. No, yeah. Tell Definitely. us a little bit about that. When I started in the studio in, in the early 90s, glamour was the biggest genre in photography in the world. Yes. And uh, that's where I started out. And I was uh, 18. And then um, as I sort of went through the 90s, glamour died. And I wasn't allowed to call it that anymore or do it anymore. And my studio was Maybe changing. Maybe not allowed. Well, it just became a dirty word. And it was just frowned upon. And people actually have a physical reaction. If I say I'm a glamour photographer, people go, ugh. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I realized that our studio was evolving at the time and we were learning Photoshop and digital photography and everything was changing. So we changed the name of our studio from Headshots Glamour Studio uh -huh. to Photographers Incorporated and we started shooting weddings and family portraits. But I was 22 at the time and I didn't want to shoot weddings or family portraits. So I had to evolve my brand in order to keep it alive. And um, I just slowly turned it over into contemporary portrait. Right. And then s took the flash away and started to shoot a more natural light mm -hmm. fashion style of portrait, which I developed over the last 15 years, but I kept it alive. So um, I have had the great joy of being photographed with you, by you, twice. twice. Mm. And with you, yeah. but by you twice. And uh, your, as the subject, it was very interesting for me to notice that your style of interaction, regardless of the actual shooting you're doing, mm -hmm. your style of interaction is one that puts your subject very much at ease. And if it's a beauty type of photography or a glamour type of photography, you also um, have this interesting way of making people feel less conscious in front of the camera and more like, oh yeah, I got it. Well, you're a, you photograph children running around screaming, and yes. you're running around screaming. Yes. So I photograph women in a state of grace, so I try to be in a state of grace. And, Do you feel uh, like that's something that you put yeah, on? Like it's you put yeah, it on? Yeah, definitely. I, I have to take them to that place. Right. So I'll go with them, and they just come with me. So I find it really easy to be there, and um, I find it really easy for them to follow me there. So, right. Yeah. Your mentality, just what we referred to earlier, your mentality about the idea that you bring success and you need to actually adjust your thoughts accordingly. Yes. How has that played into your significant success? Because uh, I left school when I was 15 and I don't have a high school education. Mm -hmm. And yet um, I took a business from zero to $20,000 a week um, really easily with just basic common sense and I really had to believe in myself because I don't have a certificate that says you know you can be a professional photographer or you can be a business person or a successful business person mm -hmm. I just had this idea that you can you can do it if you believe that you can do it yes. and so as I grew up I became more and more successful because I I believe that your attitude and what you put out there and and how you work, the state with which you work. So not what you think, but where you think constantly. Where Place, you think? Yeah, what in do your you mean? mind. Um, because I believe that what, that everything is just perception and if you dwell in a negative state or if you dwell in that I can't do this or, or if you're constantly in your mind with blocks, then you just constantly get blocks shown back to you um, on every level and once you free your mind you can pretty much do anything you like so I just I really believe that I work yes. like that I work with my business like that and myself personally and so going from a studio that um, is from zero dollars to 20k revenue weekly um, what'd you do <laughs> I learned really quickly that you need to define who you are and what you've got in order to market it. Your brand. Yes. Yes. Um, but people talk a lot about brand. Brand's not something you can buy. Brand is really just an image of who you are 
and um, what you are and it has to have integrity and it must be a reflection of who you really are and what you want to do and it conveys a message to your audience of what you are and who you are and what you want. So once I really defined that, putting it out there is just legwork. Mm. You know, um, it's not something... The work was the strategy and yeah, the thought and absolutely. the forming. And I created a really simple brand based on only what I wanted to photograph mm -hmm. and the best of my work and then a very simple message that was the truth of why I work. So, What's the message? Well, just that everybody's beautiful mm. and that they can experience that. So. Um, and it's funny because you've determined it, you put it out there, people are drawn to it, and they get that experience the whole way through with you. Yes. Which is why they're like, I'll, I'll pay for this. Also, I, I offer a makeup service, which is quite unique, so I have a full-time makeup artist with me always, and even though I offer a makeup service, ultimately the permission to give people to shine comes from inside. So you put makeup on people to make them look gorgeous right. in order to show them what's inside them, then you photograph it and sell it back to them. Yeah. I don't believe in the before and after. I try to take a before and after with some foundation on, mm -hmm. and I do Photoshop the odd before and after if it's too bad because I don't want people to, you know, have that she makes them look really bad and then she makes them look oh, really good. Oh, right, right. But I had hundreds of requests for before and afters, so I created a before and after gallery on my website. And when I did watching the statistics, it, it went nuts. Mm. Everyone went crazy over the before and after shots. Well, because so, I think a lot of people are so such visual learners. Like, show me what the difference is. Totally. Yeah. And um, people are really captivated by the transformation. If they weren't, then half the reality TV shows wouldn't be on. You know, the, ho the home makeover. We're, the we're drawn to the makeover. idea that we can be transformed. We're we can drawn, be changed, and we can be bettered. That we can we're, be bettered. We're so drawn to that. Mm, why is that? Because we can. Yeah. Because, and we want to. And we we can, it. and we want to. And the only thing that stops us is yeah. us saying, "Oh, maybe not me. Maybe it's not for me." So one of the most interesting points of that is. Um, many years that we did trade shows to advertise the studio we would have visual displays and nobody ever stopped and watched them and we would hire these big AV units and plasma screens and one day I just went and got 10 um, albums before and afters mm -hmm. um, just 8 by 12 leather albums and I filled them with before and afters and I put a table in front of um, our stand and we had lines of wow, people so just waiting to to look at them and, and everyone would just sat there going, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's something that I incorporate into my business on every level now. What are three pieces of advice you'd offer to anybody, whether it has to do with photography or business or just finding their own successes? Okay. Number one would have to be decide what it is that you want to shoot. And if you believe you can't make money just doing that, uh, that is a block. So change your idea about that okay. and start to find a way to make an income from what you love to do. Right. So a lot of people tell me they hate shooting this or they hate but they shooting have to. that, but they have to do it. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. So when I started my business, people said you can't just show glamour. It's dead. Nobody will do it. Right. You must show family portraits, babies, even weddings. And I said, but I don't shoot those things. So I'm only going to show what I want and what, what you show is what you attract. Yes. Bottom line. Yes. So only do what you love doing. Number two, write a business plan because whatever you believe, whether it's the law of attraction or the power of prayer or intent or whatever you believe, mm -hmm. until you make it clear to you, the people around you and even the universe, what you want, right. nobody's going to know. So if you want six shoots a week, then write. And you're not even going to know. No. You don't. Right. And you must write down what you want, right. put it on the wall and make it a goal. Or put it on a door. Absolutely anywhere, by the mirror, you know, post-its, everywhere in my studio I've got little notes. But the one phrase that I always have had written is I want to shoot 10 shoots a week in my studio and what we vividly imagine, ardently desire and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. I believe that. Mm. So intent versus action. Mm -hmm. And the third one is write a marketing plan. Um, I go into studios, I do talks, um, I mentor. The first question I ask is show me your marketing plan. I've yet to have a talk, a workshop or um, a personal consultation where somebody has produced one for me. So I not, have a, not, not one. Not one. I have a marketing plan that has five levels of it. 
It's a linear marketing plan from January to December, mm -hmm. and it is actioned monthly. Um, I have five levels of marketing. You can have a look at mine. You can create your own. I did this on my own. I sat down one day and I said, I don't have a marketing degree, but I have a black belt in shopping. <laughs> so I know why women buy and I know why I buy. Right. So I can create a marketing plan that's going to rock my studio based on a lot of the way the beauty industry and commercial marketing, not just the way photographers market. People look at other photographers and say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. But they don't look outside of photography as to, like, I'll do a gift with purchase like Estee Lauder. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to market my studio like all the other photographers in my country are. And that's it. So only shoot what you want to shoot. Yes. Write a business plan so that everybody knows what it is you want. And Including you and yourself. You, yeah. yeah. And write a marketing plan because you can't be the best kept secret. Right. Because that might be kind of fascinating inside. Yeah. <laughs> but you kind of want to sell your product. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and share some incredibly valuable information. I know everybody loved seeing your work. And we will have you back on soon. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you so much, Sue, for that fantastic interview and your great accent and the lovely enthusiasm. Let me ask you a question, though. Say you've just been called to the far reaches of the African continent for a once-in-a-lifetime assignment, but you cannot live without your favorite kung fu movies. Have no fear. The Pico Pocket Projector is here. This palm-sized projector has a super long-lasting battery and plugs into every media device around. The Pico can create a massive image on a wall or ceiling, and it's sure to impress with its picture clarity and memory storage. Grab yours now at adorama.com. Special thanks to our sponsors, Adorama, the photography people, and T1 Line, the voice and data solution expert.